issue facing humankind. We can deliver a Green New Deal for America. This is an incredible moment. of frontline and vulnerable communities, the most powerful movement organizing in the United States today. Grassroots organization. We can deliver a Green New Deal for America. We can deliver wind, solar, offshore wind. It will only be through an historic generational commitment to end climate change that we create the kind of democracy that works for all Americans. Never in our history have the interests of all Americans been so united I want to thank my fantastic partner, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We will save all of creation. Our energy future will not be found in the dark of a mine, but in the light of the sun, of the sun, of the sun, of the sun. The political tide has turned on the rising seas. We are reclaiming our leadership on the most important issue facing humankind. We can deliver a Green New Deal for America. Never in our history have the interests of all Americans been so united. I want to thank my fantastic partner, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We will save all of creation. 
our energy future will not be found in the dark of a mine, but in the light of the sun, of the sun, of the sun. Ed Markey's desk was thrown out in the hall by the State House bosses because Markey fought to make judges work full time. Markey's bill is now the law. Ed Markey's desk was thrown out of the hall. Ed Markey's desk. I'm Ed Markey. Fairer taxes, more jobs, better health care. Better health care. More jobs. Fairer taxes. I'm Ed Markey. Tired of watching people suffer while politicians make their backroom deals. Make their backroom deals. The bosses may tell me where to sit, no one tells me where to stand. No one tells me where to stand. No one tells me where to stand. Welcome to the first ever post-Senate debate live stream. I'm your host, Adriana Roses. Senator Ed Markey and Congressman Joe Kennedy just walked off the debate stage after the third U.S. Senate primary debate. And we're going to be joined virtually all the way from Western Massachusetts by some special guests who are here to talk about what just went down in Springfield between the two candidates. So here with us today are State Representative Trisha Farley-Bouvier, who represents the 3rd Berkshire District, our Team Markey Field organizer for Franklin, Hampshire, and Berkshire Counties, Kristen Ellico, and we'll be joined a little bit later by Springfield City Councilor Jesse Letterman. So before we jump into the discussion, I want to remind everyone to join our grassroots movement fighting for a Green New Deal and Medicare for All. So visit edmarkey.com slash volunteer to sign up. So let's jump right into it. I'd love to hear what your initial reactions are. Representative, we'll start with you. What are your thoughts on what just happened on that debate stage? Well, I think, of course, what is every, what's on everybody's mind right now is the dual uh, trauma that is happening in our country, that of the COVID-19, uh, the war really against COVID-19, and um, the race issues that are facing this country, the uprisings that are, that, that are happening across the country and across the Commonwealth. And of course, just last night in Boston, um, we had the dual or competing um, uh, events of a massive, peaceful, productive protest followed by, you know, some really troubling um, violence. And at the same time, trying to understand the frustration uh, that fueled both of those things. And so that's what's on people's minds. And of course, that was the first questions. But the, you know, when we're talking about who we would choose for to be our next senator, we have to sort of focus, right? Like we have a choice to make in September. So who would we choose? And I choose the guy that's been working for decades on environmental um, injustice. And we know if we map the um, environmental injustice communities against the communities that are being impacted the most by COVID-19, 
and are impacted the most by the racial injustice policies that have been in place for many years, those are all the same communities. And uh, first Congressman Markey and then Senator Markey has been working on environmental justice issues for so long and has led the fight and has made the difference. And he has um, been able to change lives because of that. And so he has the both the experience and, you know, to be honest, when you look at Senator Markey, he's the original progressive, right? He's the one that we strive to be when it comes to progressive policies. Great. Well, let's kick it over to Kristen and our special guest, Zing, who is joining us tonight. What were your initial reactions, Kristen? Hello, everyone. As Adriana had said, my name is Kristen Ellico. I'm the field organizer for Franklin, Hampshire, yeah. and Berkshire counties. And my daughter, Zing, is um, precedes me in reputation for sure. Um, thank you for watching me dance with her. She had specially asked that we could be dancing during this meeting. Um, and so I'm doing my best to both be present for you and present for her at the same time. Um, one of the things that I want to make sure to include here is that we really are building a strong grassroots campaign. And for me, this is about connecting with people on very basic levels in terms of how a, a U.S. Senator engages in their everyday lives. And I've had the great opportunity through two town halls now, through our caucus season, through so much of the organizing that we've been doing since I started in January to have a number of conversations with Senator Markey. And I've been very impressed at the level of attention that he has given each of the communities in which we've been doing our work. When we talk about Conway, when we talk about being in Pittsfield and the very specific issues that relate to Pittsfield, when the last time I spoke with him, we had a 20 minute conversation about all of the um, happenings in Greenfield. Those are, are very heartfelt conversations that I feel from him. And it heartens me because I really truly see and understand and know that he works hard every single day for us, regardless of where he's sitting. Um, now we're living in this age of COVID-19 where, you know, we're, we're not able to be out and as present as much as we are um, on, uh, during other times in our lives. And yet I see that same type of attention. And what I know is that it's genuine and authentic and that it's tried and true and has been happening for as long as he's been in public service. And that's something that has really helped me to understand the depth at which he is representing each of us. Um, and the thing that I help to fight with him for every single day through this campaign. So I want to invite everybody here today. Um, if you're interested in connecting with us and volunteering for this campaign, you can go to edmarkey.com volunteer. Um, you can join us on our Slack site for those of you who are a little bit more tech savvy. Um, at edmarkey.com slash slack. Um, and there's always the donation button at the top of the edmarkey.com page. So thank you all for joining us. All right. So thank you so much for that, Kristen. So I want to go back to what the representative um, mentioned on environmental justice. And in general, the topic of racial justice was a centerpiece of the discussion in the debate tonight because of the recent murder of George Floyd. So did you, Representative, did you feel that that conversation provided insight into who has the longest record defending communities of color and who will be the biggest champion for those communities moving forward? You know, to me, somebody's perspective and experience means a lot. And, and in this particular case, I'm not talking about length of experience, but from where they came from. And, um, you know, Senator Markey is, uh, has a, the lived experience of a family who was a you know, working family trying to str struggle and pay their bills. And so when he talks about protecting essential workers, during this crisis in particular, this COVID crisis in particular, he is talking from a lived experience. When he talks about student debt, he's talking about it from a lived experience. And that means a lot to me. I mean, we're supposed to have a representative government, right? That's what our country was founded on. 
And our country wasn't founded by millionaires or even what it was you know, equated to back in uh, the 1700s. It was a mix of people. And I want my representative um, down in the US Senate to be somebody who represents me and my experiences. So um, I just feel like the work that he has done time after time, whether he's in the spotlight or not in the spotlight is reflective of my values. And, and quite frankly, the values that I am continuing to learn about. Like we have a lot to learn about racial justice. And he, I, I feel like he puts himself in a position to learn and in a position to take real action from the position he is in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Kristen, I wanna kick this over to you. Um, you live in Northampton and Western Massachusetts has always had an issue with access to transportation. Mm -hmm. So that was so, sort of discussed, not at length, but which candidate do you think had the strongest answer regarding on how to address accessibility in Western Massachusetts to transportation? Sure. I heard the strongest answer from Senator Markey in his recently announced brain train bill that would fund, I think he said $5 billion per year for five years. Um, I can speak, Representative Farley Bouvier was just speaking about lived experience. For three years, I commuted into New York City to work. And I would drive to New Haven so that I could get onto Metro North. And when I think about the idea of being able to get onto a train in either Northampton or Springfield and be able to commute to a city where I can find access to work that um, is important and meaningful and all of those things. For me and my generation, that's incredibly important. And when I think about raising my daughter here in Northampton, this is a place that is very family friendly. And I think she's singing her favorite Beyonce song, which is honestly for any of you who have spent any time with us, which she does often. <laughs> but I think about, you know, the, the access that I want to give to her. I mean, for those of you, again, who know me, and it's not super easy to see with her on my back right now, but I'm a white mom raising a black child. And um, Northampton's a fairly white area, and I would like to have access to different communities and different ways in, in which we can engage in culture that feels very important to me and so not only do i think it's is it access into urban areas for work but i think it's access into urban areas for so many other reasons that urban areas exist and 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 hold opportunity mm -hmm. and so to answer your question directly again <laughs> senator markey gave me <laughs> the strongest answer <laughs> all right representative what are your thoughts well, it's really clear um, to me when I hear, so I'm the rep from Pittsfield, let's just start with that. And when one candidate talks about the East-West train from Springfield to Boston, I just, it's really clear when Ed Markey said Pittsfield to Boston that he understands that Western Mass is actually in the Berkshires, you know, and we we feel in the Berkshires left behind all the time. And um, it, it's really troubling that um, even the questioning, quite frankly, I will say that so many people um, that were asking the questions were not really asking it from a Western Mass, um, a true Western Mass viewpoint. And so, um, you know, I'm just, I was, it was heartening to me that the Senator really gets it that it's Pittsfield to Boston. We're talking about a west-east train line. Mm -hmm. No, and absolutely. When we talk about transportation in, in, in the Berkshires, um, it's we really do want that west-east rail, but there's a lot more to transportation than that. And we know that um, investment in public transportation is investment in economic development. And we in the Berkshires have been left behind over and over again for years and years when it comes to public transportation. And what most people don't realize is that we used to have much better public transportation, but it was taken from us by policies and by investments into the Boston metro area. So we continue to pour money into the Boston metro area and the Boston metro area grows, but it's at the cost of the people in the Berkshires. 
Absolutely. And so that leads me to ask, you know, you, you talk about forgetting about some of these communities, especially in Berkshire County. Um, Senator Markey um, has, you know, mentioned some of the work that he's done in specific towns all the way from DC. So how, how do you see that specific legislation that he files in DC? How do you see that affect communities all the way in Massachusetts, you know, whether it's funding that he's, you know, secured or plans like the brain train, you know, how important is that work in DC to the people on the ground like yourself? So that's what's what's really great. I can give you so many specific examples of why he's been such a terrific partner. And I'm going to I'm going to kind of lay the groundwork here and say when he was first running for Senate, um, just back in 2013, it wasn't that long ago. Um, I didn't really know anything about him because he was a congressman from the other part of the state, right? But since he's become senator, he has been in Western Massachusetts and the Berkshires consistently and reliably. And then he takes what he learns when he's here and he turns it into specific legislation. Um, the first and clearest example I can give you is when um, he first came and we talked about how we in the Berkshires do not have access to Massachusetts news. Like literally when the governor was here on the steps of City Hall in the first week of the COVID pandemic, the people of the Berkshires could not watch him on television because the Boston news stations were here and we don't get Boston news stations. I mean, it's really incredible. And the next thing I know, a couple of weeks later, I'm getting a call to say, the Senator's coming back to Pittsfield and making an announcement that he's filed legislation to work on getting Massachusetts news in, back into the Berkshires. He took what he learned, what our concerns were, he turned it into legislation and he turned it into action. And he's, he persisted on that issue for, for, I'm not saying decades, a few years. And I can tell you now that we have Massachusetts news in the Berkshires because of Ed Markey. Um, I know that when he's been in town for uh, um, other issues, like a big announcement, like something like that, that we're kind of used to, you know, the big wigs coming in town for, he carves out time to have listening sessions with people. Um, and he'll say, you know, Trisha, can you set something up for me? And we have had roundtables with community members so he can hear what the issues are. And he doesn't bring, you know, camera people with him, the news people with him. He wants to hear what the real issues are so then he can go back and make the changes that need to be made. So I can tell you that many, many, many times Senator Markey over the last six years have been in the Berkshires. And the idea, the crazy idea that that member of Congress is saying that he hasn't been here is just absolutely wrong. And all I can say is pants on fire, Congressman. <laughs> absolutely, it is wrong and it is inappropriate. And it is quite frankly, beneath a public servant to talk like that. Well, I can say the very first time I went to Pittsfield was with Senator Markey. <laughs> it was, it was absolutely beautiful. So I can, I can attest to that. <laughs> Um, Kristen, so as someone who, you know, you both live in Western Massachusetts, but Kristen, I'd love to hear from you. Did, did you think that this debate showed voters in that region, you know, everything they needed to know about this race, or do you think there's still topics that weren't really hit on that pertained to that region specifically? That's a great question. You know, I think the general questions were Massachusetts questions. And when I think about Western Massachusetts, we're just such a diverse segment of the population and a, a, a set of diverse communities. I mean, my, my organizing three of the counties, I can tell you that each of them are very, very different from each other from what I understand and know about Hamden County as well as it's incredibly different from all of the other three. And I think the thing that was somewhat disappointing for me is that we, we skirted a little bit, and I think this was based on the questions that were asked. The, the, we talked about Western Mass as a general area, but there weren't those specific questions other than just a few where we were able to really hear from both candidates how they, how they are more specific in the work that they've done. And 
you know, I, I, I almost said I'm traveling around. I'm not traveling around as much, but I'm virtually traveling around having lots of conversations with people individually around why is, why is Senator Markey the right Senator for me? And I think about the fact that I know you want to listen to Beyonce, sweetheart. We're going to, we're going to talk about something a little bit harder than that right now. What I was about to say (laughs) is that um, I can I can speak to every constituent in in each of my three counties and say I know that Senator Markey has voted against Donald Trump 27 times and that's more than any other senator sitting in the Senate right now and when I think about how that affects all of us it affects my three counties in particular very very specifically um, when I think about the fact that in my own research again going back to um, how, how and why are Senator Markey, is Senator Markey the right senator for us? And I see that he's passed under Republican leadership 27 bills that are, and I say this respectfully, not just naming post offices, but actually bills that drive money into our region, it matters. Um, and so while we didn't hear those things, those are the ways in which he has been serving us for the six years that he has been. Um, and and really make a difference. Representative, your thoughts. Right, so uh, it was troubling that we didn't get into the specifics, for example, on rural poverty and why that that is so important. And he was, the Senator was able to touch a little bit on in the response to the opiate epidemic and why that is so important um, here in, in Western Mass. Again, kind of marrying that with the challenges of of uh, rural issues. So, um, you know, I'd like to uh, be able to lift up those conversations um, for, for the, you know, the rest as this campaign um, lays itself out, um, goes forward. But I am um, also, you know, really troubled when I hear um, issues from, from, the, uh, from the congressman about um, you know, he should have, or it would have been better if, or this is the kind of leadership we need, as if he hasn't been in office for the same amount of time as a senator has been a senator. Like, he didn't say any of the things that he did to, for example, prevent COVID from coming to the United States. Like, he is in the position of leadership, and because of his name and his privilege, he has influence all over this country. And if if he couldn't do as a congressman, what makes he think makes anybody think he can do it differently as a senator? And the idea that you know he needs to, to be the senator to be able to suddenly be able to lead is a false narrative. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think one of the other topics that was really missing that is relevant to Western Massachusetts was the topic of the community, the Puerto Rican community in Springfield and Holyoke and Chicopee. And unfortunately there was no question regarding that, but I think, you know, it's important to highlight that that is another area where the Senator has focused a lot of efforts um, that directly affect communities. So trying to find housing for hurricane survivors, um, voting against a fiscal oversight board that is imposed on the island of Puerto Rico. Um, You know, it's, it's something that our, our opponent says that it's not just about filing the right bills and voting the right way, but I think it is really important to highlight that is a big part of the job. And I would have loved to see that part of the conversation specifically to the tailored to the Puerto Rican community. You know, how have you both been present for that community in Western Massachusetts? Because I know for a fact, um, you know, Senator Murphy's response to the earthquakes in Puerto Rico in January and even some aftershocks now in May, you know, he fought for an extension of the major disaster declaration, for example. Um, so mm-hmm. that would have been a really interesting piece of the conversation that I hope gets touched, touched upon during the Senate primary, but unfortunately didn't tonight. Um, so going off of that, you know, about... Can, oh, I, can uh, I just emphasize something, Adrian? Okay. I just want to really emphasize something. And it's one thing to file a bill. We as legislators know we can file lots of things. It's another thing to be able to get them across the finish line. Mm-hmm. And what Kristen talked about of being able to pass, you know, these 27 bills, um, a, many of them having to do with funding coming coming to our communities in Western Mass and passing that, you know, in, you know, with Republican leadership in the Senate and the White House is a really big 
deal. And, um, you know, we can file as many bills as we want, but in the end, it, it comes, you know, the record shows that he's able to get things accomplished. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And, and, you know, going off of, I'm Puerto Rican, so I pay attention to a lot of these things. Um, you know, the senator was in Springfield holding a round table regarding the earthquakes, you know, so he was present then in, in, in that community in Western Massachusetts. He went to Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria, you know, just a couple weeks after. Mm -hmm. So I think it is, you know, important to highlight that you can't just make claims about him being present, but, you know, there is a record that, that proves all these things. And Representative, you touched a little bit on that, but I'd like to ask you, you know, it, it, what do you think is the most important quality for us to have in a senator? And you did mention, you know, being able to get things done. But other than that, you know, what are you looking for in a senator? So, so as a community member, I'm looking for a senator who will do what I always consider the first job of a legislator, and that is to listen, right? Like, your work isn't about doing things that you think are the best things to do. Your job is to um, listen to your community, um, gather the information, and then make policy, you know, for, for the community. As an elected official, I'm looking for a partner, right, in, in, uh, in the federal government. So I always say that we do our best work when local, state, and federal elected officials work together. And um, I have, from the, from the time he took office, well, honestly, from the time before he took office, it's easy for me to access um, the senator's office. Um, I can give you um, many examples, but maybe the thing that comes to mind most is um, at the beginning of the outbreak um, in the United States, when we um, had uh, students, many students that were overseas and their parents, I happen to be one of them, but my kids, my youngest was overseas, um, you know, getting them home um, from their study abroad, people were in a panic because it, it was really confusing. And who did I turn to? I turned to Senator Markey's office and I was able to get the help I needed that was very specific and, and really did make a difference for, um, for those families. Um, I need a senator that is going to understand what we need um, when it comes to funding. And I can give you an example. I know that he was a lead fighter when it came to getting money directly to cities and towns and, in relief um, for COVID. And we got almost $800,000 just for the city of Pittsfield um, to, in CBDG money, which means that we had a lot of flexibility in how to spend that money, which is really important. And so my mayor and city council were able to make decisions about how they spent that money. And for Pittsfield, it was about helping families pay rent and helping the very small businesses be able to get grants to be able to really survive this time. Kristen, I'd love to hear, you know, you're a field organizer, so you're out in the community talking to people from all these sorts of different counties that you organize in. What do you hear from voters as being, you know, what they're looking for? the top quality that they're looking for in a senator. Sure. You know, I, while you were asking the question about Puerto Rico, not to go back, but to go back, um, go you were reminding me actually of, um, I had been recently organizing in Holyoke and went back to a community of people who I had been connected with in a past election cycle and was sharing with them um, that I was working with Senator Markey right now. And they said, oh, is that the senator who came and saw us at Fiesta Cafe in Holyoke last year. And I just wanted to note that like specific example and, and instance of it, it, Senator Markey being in a place, in a time, in a moment with people remembering, connecting with him. And, and it was, I think, a very powerful moment for the people who were able to be there. And the thing that I know about that event is it wasn't that he needed to gather a hundred people in a room there, you know, maybe were five or 10 people who were coming in and out. And it wasn't about necessarily the pomp and circumstance of it, but it was actually about connecting with individual, very real people in a very real moment. Um, and, and, and going back, Adriana, I'm forgetting what your initial question was around in my being <laughs> out and organizing, but I no, think no, I half answered it, but that was moving backwards. And so moving forwards, you were asking me. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. I think that was an important thing to highlight. I'm, I'm just curious, you know, when you're out and about or used to be out and about in your um, organizing regions, 
what 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 do you hear voters say? Hey, this is exactly what I'm looking for in a senator. What quality are they on the lookout for when making the decision that they're going to have to make on September 1st? Yeah, I mean, for me, number one has really, especially in my region, been someone who's doing the work both at home and in Washington. Um, You know, I have a very specific, and I've shared this with a number of people, I have a very specific viewpoint on this issue. Um, We get so much done face to face, and that's something that we're missing right now. And I've heard a number of people, regardless of what Um, what kind of work we do, those informal conversations really matter. Um, And so when I think about someone who I want leading me, I want someone who is able to hold that conversation in the hallway or able to hold that conversation with someone across the aisle or able to hold that conversation with someone who is different from them. And that is, that is what I'm hearing what matters. I think the experience um, that Senator Markey has is something that I'm also hearing is very important. They're, they're really appreciating the um, ways in which he's been a leader. And a, a one very specific way, especially in this area, is that there are a number of people who have been long fighting um, nuclear energy just in general, um, especially up and down the Pioneer Valley. And Senator Markey has been a leader in terms of nuclear proliferation um, and and his real sort of support in protecting us. And maybe you can help me remember, but he has legislation that um, is, is first strike related. So it limits the ability for the president of the United States to be able to pull a trigger. Um, and that those are the conversations that we're having. They're looking at very specific ways that he has introduced and passed bills that have protected us again, regardless of whether we're in an urban Boston area or whether we're in North Adams or, you know, a hill town like, I don't know, Middletown, Middlefield. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. So, okay. So we've been a little, you know, we've gotten to the nitty gritty and to the details of some of these topics. I'd love, I'd love to just talk a little bit kind of overarching theme, you know, what did you think were Senator Markey's strongest moments during tonight's debate? Hmm. Well, before I answer that question, Adrian, I really want to go back to what people are looking for in a, in a candidate. And there's no question, everybody that I talk to um, that are activists, that are really involved and really care about a primary vote, the first thing they say to me is, there is no question that Ed Markey is the most progressive candidate in this race. Like they are not fooled. They know who the progressive is and um, and who they support. They've known his work for a very long time and they plan to do everything they can to get him elected. So I really wanna be able uh, to say that. And um, when your question is what was the strongest moment um, I think he had is when he was as clear as can be that he has been in Western Mass, in the Berkshires, and responding to the people of, of, of the Berkshires and Western Mass in very real ways. When he talked about his train um, legislation and how he un- believes and understands the, um, the need for the investment of, of uh, public transportation and how he is thinking, not for a term, but for a generation. And that was really clear to me that his um, his experience and his long term values are here for us today and are here for us in the future. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, Kristen. What do you think? I think for me, you know, he was incredibly specific with each and every answer that he gave, and. I'll disclaim myself, I can be a real sucker for visionary people and and visionary speaking and can get really sort of sucked into that hope and belief. And um, But right now, specifics matter to me and specifics matter to every single voter that I'm having a conversation with. And, you know, I had a friend text me in the middle of the debate and say, you know, it really impressed me that Senator Markey, you know, when asked about Western Massachusetts was specific to Lennox and not just the Berkshires because that's a, with all due respect to everybody, like an easy way to be coached to like include Western Mass, like, oh, don't forget all the way to the border. Um, 
he was very specific about a lot of the answers that he gave and, and, and the ways in which he really um, fights hard every single day to do the work. And that's really meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. And I see it in him every single day that I have the opportunity to be able to be working with him. And so today he felt authentic in that as well. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And I, I, I personally really enjoyed some of the answers revolving around COVID-19. So, you know, what actions have both of the candidates actually taken in regards to COVID? Um, and I think one of the things that I took away from the debate is, you know, who is the best crisis manager? Because mm -hmm. that we're in a crisis right now. And whoever is the best crisis manager now is most likely to be the best crisis manager in regards to the climate crisis, the gun violence crisis that we're facing, the racial justice crisis that we're facing. Um, and that actually reminds me of his For Freedom speech in Pittsfield. Mm -hmm. And it was an incredible speech because it, it highlights all of those things that we're seeing nowadays. And I really appreciated that the Senator, you know, was very strong in naming all those things he's done to manage the crisis. Um, so, Going off of that, the discussion, of course, centered around COVID-19 quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Other than that topic, you know, other than, other than COVID-19 and the specific Western Massachusetts topics, are there any topics that you guys think that we need to cover that pertain to the whole state? Um, you know, immigration, criminal justice reform, you know, moving forward, there's a, a debate on Monday. What else do you want to hear the candidates discuss? Well, I, I really want to hear more about how, um, you know, he, he really said strongly about how COVID-19 has unearthed or shown us great spotlight on the racial um, injustices that we have. So it's not that those racial injustices weren't always there. It's just that now we really see them in the data, right? And um, when people are looking, you know, every day at how many new deaths, well, why does this keep happening? Why does it keep happening? Because we we have not solved these problems. And so, yes, I agree with you, Adriana, that we need somebody who can look at this crisis and be able to lead in time of crisis, but able to do so in a way that leads us through to the post-COVID era, which we will have. We will have both a post-COVID era and we will have a post-Trump era. And what are we doing to make sure that we have a more just um, and equitable um, community um, after this? And it's things like having good public transportation. It's protecting immigrants um, from the great, great injustices that have particularly been wrought in the last four years. And um, he is able to think forward in that way. And it's not just rhetoric, it's with specific policies. Absolutely. That's what I want to hear about. I want to hear about specific policies. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Kristen, what do you think? The thing that I would add, and and it's in conjunction, is the the coalition work, um, hearing past coalition work, but the future coalition work that Senator Markey will lead around bringing us all together. Um, to me, it's the way that we are, it, it's fusion politics for me. It's how do we, regardless of race, regardless of class, come together to really create a new society. I mean, we have a moment in time right now and the ability to be able to, to Representative Farley Bouvier's points, like create legislation that allow us to tear down systemic injustices and build up communities and cultures and um, a country that I believe most of the people that I surround myself with want and need. And so I think hearing the the leadership and the, and, um, the ways in which Senator Markey does that every single day, the highlighting of those coalitions is, you know, when he talks about the work with Representative Ocasio-Cortez, and um, I think that's a great example of the way in which he can work with um, sometimes unlikely partners to be able to move us forward into something that's um, incredibly important is what I want to hear about. Absolutely. And I think another topic that wasn't brought up, which I thought would be, was uh, mail-in voting. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important, you know, when you're looking at a crisis, you know, who has been 
early and aggressive and effective. And, you know, Senator Markey introduced legislation in March that would expand vote by mail access for the elections because of the coronavirus. Um, and so that is something that I would have liked to hear from both candidates, you know, how should we move forward with our elections and protecting the right to vote and expanding early voting moving forward, not just in September 1st, but also November 3rd, because this is something that's going to affect all the elections this year. And, you know, not doing anything about it is, is just simply wrong. So I would have liked to hear that discussion a little bit. Um, but I would, I want to close. Thank you so much, both of you for being here for this first ever post Senate debate. Um, and of course, Zing, who is um, <laughs> Beyonce's biggest fan. <laughs> so that's it for tonight's discussion. Do you guys have a final message that you want to send out? Kristen, any final thoughts? Yeah, sure. So one way you can get involved very easily at home is to create your own support.edmarkey.com page. Um, both Representative Farley Bouvier and I have done that. It's this very cool new tool that, as far as I understand, no campaign has ever innovated or used, and it allows you to basically tell us why you believe that Senator Markey is the next best senator for Massachusetts, and it helps um, you to connect your network and your community of people with us so that speaking to, for example, how we will all be voting in the future, we don't really know, but one of the things that I as an organizer am going to need to do is explain to people how they will have options to vote. Um, and so being able to connect with as many people that I know are supporting the Senator in this upcoming election will be incredibly important. Absolutely. And I want to point out, you can make your supporter page in Spanish as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just mine nice. is in Spanish. So I want to make sure that everyone knows to so spread the word. Representative, your last thoughts. Right. So um, I guess I'll go back to um, uh, the four freedoms that you talked about before, Adriana. And now what people might not know is that um, Senator Markey was at our first Four Freedoms March. And this was in very early January of 2017, two weeks before the you know most famous Women's March, where we had thousands of people in this on a very, very cold day in Pittsfield. And Senator Markey talked about how he, let it be known that here in the Berkshires of Pitts, Pittsfield, of the county of Berkshires, the resistance has started. And here we are now in 2020, one of the most important election years of our lifetimes. And he is still here fighting with us. And one thing that we know for sure, that when it comes to elections, we do not count how many ads you put in a paper or how many Facebook posts you have, or how much money is in your bank account, or how many properties that you own. That is not what wins elections. What wins elections is how many votes you get. And that is in the power of the people. And it's the exact organizing tools that Kristen has just talked about that allows you to not only use this tool, but it's just a tool to get you to talk to your neighbors and your friends and the people that you know in your social networks to be able to one-on-one -on -one talk to people and get the vote out. It's those relationships that win elections and it's those kinds of things that are going to get the most progressive Senator back into Washington representing the people of the Berkshires of Western Massachusetts and the entire Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Let's get those votes. That was beautiful. I, the first time we went to Pittsfield for the four freedoms this, this year, he told me it was very cold in 2017 when I was here. That's right. It's <laughs> so very cold. That's when we really got there. All right. So that's it for tonight's discussion. I want to thank Representative Trisha Farley Bouvier and Kristen Ellico for joining us tonight. And thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to visit edmarkey.com slash volunteer and support.edmarkey.com to create your own supporter pages in both English and Spanish. And don't forget to tune in next Monday, June 8th at 7 p.m for the fourth U.S. Senate primary debate. Stay safe and good night, everyone. Bye now. Thank you so much. The political tide 
has turned on the rising seas. We are reclaiming our leadership on the most important issue facing humankind. We can deliver a Green New Deal for America. of all Americans been so united. I want to thank my fantastic partner, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We will save all of creation. Our energy future will not be found in the dark of a mine, but in the light of the sun. 